Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Today, for day two of our acid-base notes, we're going to be focusing on strong versus weak acids and bases. Uh, let's get started with strong acids and bases. And hide that stuff. Um, acids and bases that are strong are going to ionize completely in solution. Let's go to blue here. Uh, which means that they're going to dissociate fully in water. And we say that the reaction goes to completion. So it dissociates or separates 100% within solution. This means that they're converted into 100% products and are going to be represented in the reaction as a single-sided arrow. pointing to the products. So here you can see with a strong acid, we have that single-sided arrow. Uh, when we add hydrochloric acid to water, it fully dissociates into hydronium ion and the cli uh, chloride ion. And here again, we have a strong base. Strong bases always start off as a solid, and when you add them to water, they'll dissociate into their ions. And here, it fully dissociates into the sodium and hydroxide ion. In the image here, uh, it shows what a strong acid does when you add it to solution. So when you add it to water, here you could see that the particles are all fully separated or dissociated in solution. Because of that, you have a lot of hydrogen ions floating around and the stronger or the more hydrogen ions that you have, the stronger your acid is going to be. And the more ions you have, the stronger electrolyte it's going to be as well. Now, weak acids and bases are different. They are uh, weak acids and bases only partially ionize or partially dissociate in solution. And because of this, they are equilibrium reactions. So we see the double-sided arrows with the weak acids and bases. That's one of the indicators that uh, to show you that it's weak. Um, here with our weak acid plus water, we have that reversible reaction, the double-sided arrow, and it's producing a hydronium ion and an acetate ion. With the weak base in water, uh, again, reversible reaction, equilibrium reaction, it's forming CH3, NH3 plus there, and the hydroxide ion. The acids, you'll notice, will always make hydronium ion, and the bases are always going to produce the hydroxide ion. Now, because they are weak here, when you add them to water, you can see they only partially separate. or partially ionized there. And you only have a few particles that are separated there. And the fewer hydrogen particles you have, the weaker the acid concentration is going to be. Uh, because weak acids and bases are equilibrium reactions, we can de determine the KEQs, or the equilibrium constant expression, for these problems. Now, for an acid, this is called Ka, and that is our acid ionization constant. So for acids, we call the KEQs Ka's instead. And we can write out what this Ka or KEQ would look like. It's going to be the concentration of our products divided by the concentration of our reactants. So we have hydronium ion times the fluoride ion divided by the concentration of hydrofluoric acid. Water is a liquid. Remember, we do not include liquids or solids in equilibrium constant expressions. So that's what the acid ionization constant expression would look like for that weak acid problem. The larger the Ka you have, the stronger your acid is going to be. Now, the opposite would be true. The smaller the Ka is, that's supposed to be a K, 
the weaker the acid is. Now the same is going to apply for weak bases. The KEQ equals KB for a base. We would call that the base ionization constant. Now KB is going to be small for a weak base. The smaller it is, the weaker it is. And the larger the KB, uh, KB is, the stronger your base is going to be. Now if it gets to be a value of 1, then that would mean uh, that it's a strong base or strong acid and it would fully dissociate in solution. All right, we're going to practice writing uh, reactions for acids and bases and how to write their Ka and Kb. So here we have a weak acid, H2SO3. Because it is an acid, it is going to be a proton donor. These are bronsted lowry acid base reactions. So it's going to donate a proton to water. When it does that, it forms the hydronium ion. And when this loses a hydrogen, what we have left over is the hydrogen sulfite ion, HSO3 negative. Um, in looking at this reaction here, we see a couple of things. Everything is aqueous except for water. Water is a liquid. You always add your substance to water. We have that double-sided arrow to show that it is a weak acid. And our charges are conserved. We have a plus one and a minus one charge on the product side. That adds up to zero. On our reactant side, we have no charges, which is also zero. So the charges have to be conserved or the same on both sides of the reaction. Now, since this one was an acid, I'm going to write Ka for the ionization constant expression. Concentration of products, which is the hydronium ion, times the hydrogen sulfide ion, divided by the concentration of products, which is sulfurous acid there. Now, for the next one, for our base there, we have uh, the monohydrogen phosphate ion. Bases, remember, are proton acceptors. So it's going to accept a proton from water. So water is going to donate that proton there. When water loses one, it is left as hydroxide ion, which is why we know this is a base then. And uh, HPO4 2 minus takes on another hydrogen, it becomes H. 2PO4, and because that hydrogen ion had a plus 1 charge, negative 2 plus 1 leaves us with a minus 1 charge overall. Again, on our product side, we have negative 1 plus negative 1, which is negative 2. On our reactant side, we have a charge of negative 2, so charges are conserved. And notice, with the base, as we said before, Bases are always going to give us hydroxide, and the acids are going to give us hydronium for those weak acid-base reactions. All right, uh, now we're going to write the Kb for this reaction. Let's go back to blue here. So it's going to be the concentration of the products, hydroxide, times the dihydrogen phosphate ion, over the concentration of our reactants, which is the monohydrogen phosphate ion. We don't include water because water is a liquid there. All right, now we're going to look at how we can decide uh, with images of the particles in solution, how can we decide if we have a concentrated versus a dilute solution and a strong versus a weak acid. Now, if I have a strong acid, we said it fully dissociates. That means the particles will all be separated. And if we had a weak acid, they're only going to be partially separated.
If it's concentrated, that means we have a lot of solute. So we're going to have a lot of particles. And if it's dilute, we only have a little bit of solute. So if it's dilute, we're going to have a few particles. So in our first picture here, we have a lot of particles, which means this is going to be concentrated. And most of those particles are together. They're only partially separated. So this is going to be concentrated and a weak acid. In our picture straight down from it, we have a lot of particles. Because there's a lot of particles, it is going to be concentrated. And notice how they're all separated. Because they're all separated, it's going to be a strong acid then. In the picture in the upper right here, we can see we only have a few particles. So that means it is dilute. And those particles are mostly together, which means it's going to be a weak acid. And in our last picture there, we have a few particles, again, making it dilute. And they're all separated, which makes it a strong acid then. So in general, how can you tell if something is strong or weak? Okay, so you're not always going to see the pictures of it. How do you know like H2SO4, sulfuric acid, is strong? Or how do you know that carbonic acid, the acid that's in pop, is weak? Um, there's some general rules for identifying strong acids and bases. First off, strong acids are made from halogens. Remember, halogens are group 7A or group 17, except for HF. Hydrofluoric acid is a weak acid, but HCl, HBr, HI, those are all going to be strong acids. Now, if it has a polyatomic ion in it, it's going to be an oxy acid. Strong oxy acids have two more oxygens than hydrogens. So if it has two or more oxygens compared to hydrogens, then that is going to make it a strong oxy acid. Strong bases are going to be made from alkali metals. Alkali metals are your group one metals, lithium, sodium, potassium, rubidium, francium, and some from group two. They are calcium, strontium, and barium. Those are also going to make strong bases. So we're going to do some practice with this idea here. First off, we see NaOH. NaOH contains hydroxide ion, okay? Hydroxide means it's going to be a base. Uh, NaOH starts with Na, starts with sodium. Sodium is a group one metal, so it is going to be a strong base then. Next up, H2SO4 starts with hydrogen, which means it's going to be an acid. Now, because it's an oxy acid, we have to count oxygens compared to hydrogens. I have four oxygens compared to two hydrogens. That's two more oxygens than hydrogens. That will make this guy strong. Uh, the next one, magnesium hydroxide, ends in hydroxide. That's going to make it a base. Uh, magnesium is group two, but it is not calcium, strontium, or barium. Therefore, it is a weak base. H2CO3 is an acid. It starts with the hydrogen ion, so therefore it is an acid. It has three oxygens compared to two hydrogens. That's only one more oxygen than hydrogen. Therefore, it is considered weak. Next up, we have HCl. Starts with hydrogen, therefore it is an acid. Chloride is a halogen. So hydrochloric acid is considered to be a strong acid. Uh, next up, we have hydroxide. Therefore, it is going to be a base. 
Um, barium is not a group one metal, but it's one of the ones that we identified, calcium, strontium, and barium, that makes it a strong base. So this would be considered strong. Aluminum hydroxide contains hydroxide, so it is a base. Aluminum is not in group one, nor is it a, uh, calcium, strontium, or barium. Therefore, it is a weak base. And our last one here, we have an acid. Starts with a hydrogen, so it's going to be an acid. And uh, with this one, you have four oxygens compared to hydrogens three hydrogens, but you only have one more oxygen than hydrogen. That's going to make this one weak. So phosphoric acid is a weak acid.